the behavior exhibited by fluid is governed by fluid properties, flow conditions and the engineering application where it is being used. The same fluid under different flow conditions exhibits different behaviors and flow characteristics. For example, the fluid flow inside a turbine looks very different from a flowing river. Even though both flows are chaotic, one flow has more rotational component and therefore ends up moving the blades of the turbine to transfer its kinetic energy. Under certain scenarios, fluid flow becomes more regular and smooth. In fact, we can experience the same flow behavior in our water faucets at home. The same flow can become chaotic if we crank up the flow of water through these faucets. In this lesson, we will explore and attempt to classify the different types of flows. A sound knowledge of these flow classifications help us understand the flow behavior and draw some scientific conclusions about the nature of these flows. A fluid can be in motion or at rest. For a fluid to be at rest, it needs to be contained by solid walls. When a fluid is at rest, it is called a static fluid and the study of such fluids is commonly referred to as fluid statics. The study of fluids in motion is referred to as fluid dynamics. The field of fluid dynamics can be broadly classified as hydrodynamics, which is the study of liquids and gas dynamics, which is the study of compressible gases. Large volumes of water can be stored in dams and reservoirs. When this water is stationary, it is an example of fluid statics. This stored water is released for generating electricity. When the dam gates open, water starts to flow downstream. This is an excellent example of fluid dynamics. Most fluid flows in nature are unsteady. This means most fluid motions show varying behavior in time. Depending on the application, the unsteadiness can be a result of randomness and flow mixing at various length scales ranging from microscopic to macroscopic. However, in certain applications, fluid unsteadiness can be neglected and fluid motion can be regarded as invariant in time. In other words, flow parameters such as velocity and pressure are varying only in space. Such time invariant flows are called steady flows. When a valve on a pipe is opened, the flow is initially unsteady. Once the unsteadiness is flushed, the resulting flow steadies out. It is important to understand that this happens only if the valve is connected to a constant supply of fluid. Certain fluids can be invariant spatially. That is, the flow characteristics and variables such as velocity remain unchanged along the flow. Such flows are commonly referred to as uniform flows. When the flow characteristics vary with location along the flow path, they are called non-uniform flows. Non-uniform flows are very commonly found in various engineering applications. The fluid flow in a long straight pipe used to transport crude oil from one location to another can be treated as a uniform flow. Beyond a certain initial length, the velocity of the flow at every cross section is nearly the same. When the very same oil transport pipeline bends, the resultant flow becomes non-uniform. In certain flows, fluid particles rotate about their respective axis as they flow along their respective flow paths. Such flows are classified as rotational flows. These are observed widely in nature. A good example of a rotating flow is a hurricane. When a hurricane is viewed from space, we can identify its rotational pattern. The individual particles rotating in a localized region can cause 
rotation in the bulk fluid causing vortices in the flow. In irrotational flows, on the other hand, individual fluid particles are not rotating about their axis. Nearly all real flows are rotational. A good example of nearly rotational flow can be an unsteady accelerating flow over an aircraft. A flow particle in the flow field does not show any rotational characteristics as it flows over this airfoil. Another important way to classify is to categorize them based on what the flow looks like. Really low speed flow resembles as if individual flow particles are moving in smooth layered fashion called lamina. Such flow speeds are classified as laminar flows. In laminar flows, there is no mixing within the fluid molecules. A turbulent flow on the other hand is characterized by flow mixing, random fluctuations and chaotic motion. Most high speed flows show this type of flow behavior. A laminar flow can transition into turbulent by increasing the fluid velocity. Between laminar and turbulent regimes, a flow can show both laminar and turbulent flow characteristics simultaneously. Such flows are classified as transitional flows. In low speed liquid and gas flows, the density of the fluid is assumed invariant. Such flows are generally referred to as incompressible flows. In these flows, the volume of the fluid parcels does not change. Water flowing through a distribution pipe is a good example of an incompressible flow. Compressibility is however necessary for high speed flows where the volume of fluid parcels change with position. This is because of the variation in density throughout the flow. This density variation is accounted through an equation of state as a function of pressure and temperature. A compressible flow can be further classified based on its velocity compared to the speed of sound in that medium. Mach number, which is defined as the ratio of fluid velocity with that of the speed of sound in that medium provides this comparison. Subsonic flows have a Mach number less than 1, whereas supersonic flows have a characteristic Mach number greater than 1. When transitioning from subsonic to supersonic, these flights occasionally show what is known as sonic boom. Fluids can also be classified based on their flow configuration as external and internal flows. An external flow is generally a flow over a solid object whereas internal flows are confined within the walls and boundaries of pipes and manifolds. Airflow through an HVAC duct to cool offices and shopping malls is a good example of an internal flow. In this case, the air conditioning unit has to overcome the viscous effects of air flowing throughout the duct. In an external flow, viscous effects are really important very close to the walls of the body. The region farther away from the body is generally regarded as invisible. In an internal flow, however, viscous effects are important throughout the flow field. A good example of an external flow would be a flow over a football or soccer ball. In this case, the airflow around this ball helps bend the ball into the goalpost. This technique is used by most football players to score goals from a corner kick.